many of us in the Western world probably have grown up hearing and then basically making this our reality that mind is synonymous with brain. We're scientific materialists, so we, we believe that the brain is uh, the, the generator, you could say. It's the, the source, the, the energy, the fuel, the, the platform for mind. And, uh, and that's what we, what we not only believe, but literally that's what we see. That's how we perceive everything. And no matter how much evidence there might be, if we looked uh, without bias, that this model cannot explain at least not all scientific data that we collect, we, we think the measurements are wrong because we hold on to that assumption so strongly. We make it into... Scientifically, you could say we make it into an axiom uh, or a, a premise rather than a hypothesis. We just think it's true. And so we don't even think about whether or not it is true. There are a few things like that, but since we're talking about the mind, this is, uh, let's, let's stick with that. And, and of course, the ramifications, the implications of, of such a hypothesis and holding to it are enormous. Because we, we limit ourselves to a, uh, to a closed intelligence, basically, to a closed existence. We have our CPU up there and, uh, you know, all the other devices, the motherboard and all of that. And then we have a few tiny senses that peek out and then we need to internally process, process all that and then throw something out of mind, speech and body. And so the entire mechanistic worldview is replicated in how we think a human being relates. Basically, we treat ourselves as a machine and uh, as, a, as a machine that constantly needs uh, upgrading and fixing and working on and that never is quite right. And uh, the, the model then that we project on ourselves, of course, we see everybody else in the same way. And then we build organizations, we build institutions, we build models of relationship, families, we build an entire world based on this construct. And so the reflection of, of our own assumptions about ourselves, about our own agency, are reflected everywhere, out there, so to speak. And in, in this way, really examining closely understanding coming to a definitive conclusion about the nature of mind equals to being open to revisit our entire cosmology what what is intelligence what what is human agency what is in this way even such philosophical questions like what is the purpose of life all of these questions have a very different uh, scope of response when we allow ourselves to truly examine, there is no faith needed, there is no belief needed. Although those could be helpful sometimes to have faith, but uh, they aren't needed to come to a definitive conclusion that definitely can show us that the current model of how we treat ourselves as humans, generally not anybody here anymore, of course, but generally on, on this planet, uh, how these conclusions that we have come to have been uh, basically superstitious. They, they have simply been assumptions that we um, decided were true rather than being assumptions. Instinctively recognize that open intelligence and mind are synonymous. This statement is completely amazing. It means that you are the intelligence of the universe walking around in this body. You are not a tiny little camera walking around from a separate self and generating your own life for a, a few decades and then dying. You are the intelligence of the universe that has created all of this without any effort, without any forethought. And this is what is moving about our daily activities. This is what's looking in every single interaction that we have. That's what's listening. This is the vast intelligence of, of nature. 
that has come up with incredible feats with, without any intellectual analysis at all. And so to behold that, to, to really feel the vastness of that, the, the depth of empowerment that rests in that assurance is an incredible teaching. So open intelligence and mind are synonymous. Short moments of open intelligence repeated many times become continuous. Everyone here has recognized that to one degree or another. You may still feel as if you're in the process, so to speak, of making it continuous. However, rather than looking at your life as a sequence of past, present and future, in this here and now, as this here and now, there is no such process. There is the recognition of open intelligence. And in that recognition, there is a sense that this is always present. It isn't a process of it becoming present or it being born or it's a recognition. We recognize, we understand again the nature of our own existence. Pure knowing in that moment revealed as always already present. Open intelligence can be counted on without fail. That's, again, another incredible statement to make. What else can we rely on without fail? This is awesome. This is the greatest gift anybody could ever wish for. Something that you can rely on no matter what happens. The insight that we have with open intelligence, that's why so many of us are so passionate to spread this teaching, is we see it is the solution to all problems. And why? Because it is already here. It isn't something we need to create. Everything humans have created from the wrong perception of what a human being is, has always positive and negative aspects. That's exactly how we perceive ourselves and everything else. It is only from the perception, from the recognition of pure benefit that we can create, innovate, invent something that is of pure benefit. And intelligence can only recreate to the level that itself is capable of. You know, other things could, of course, be born out of luck, basically. But with purpose and intention, we, we cannot exceed with precision what we have available to us, ourselves. It would just be guessing, like shooting an arrow in the dark, hoping it would hit the target. So to know what can be counted on without fail is just of utmost importance and to rely on that without fail. That is something we can do. We can always choose to rely on open intelligence as the primary means to inform our mind, our speech, and our body. No one can take this choice away from us, ever. So in each moment, this is the most important choice we make. It fuels all other choices that come either from an existence that is tiny, trapped, and forever trying to not be flawed or to be more perfect than it already is, or it comes from the recognition of the intelligence of the universe as seeing already all solutions that are available to us. Where else do we have this access point so precisely laid out? What, what would be more important than that? In a short moment, open intelligence is naked and unadorned. All descriptions fall away. They don't fall away as in going somewhere, but they're outshone in the bright light of open intelligence. They're illuminated with such force that they aren't seen as something any longer. The distraction of labeling and of seeking is eliminated while this short moment of open intelligence is on, so to speak. 
luckily, this is always the case, whether we recognize this to be the case or not. It is open intelligence that knows, that sees, that listens, always, whether that is being recognized or not. So in a short moment of remembering open intelligence, if you think, oh my God, I haven't taken a short moment for the last, I don't know, hour, day, minute, and instead of panicking about that, rest assured that open intelligence was equally present and we need not go back and undo a past that doesn't exist. We can just relax completely and enjoy this here and now, luminous and vibrant with, with meaning, with profound meaning.